See those two holes there? I'm going to show you how to fix them with a perfect fitting plasterboard every single time. We're also going to deal with bubbles when your plaster starts bubbling up, tearing when you're trying to blend in and the plaster starts to tear away, and when it starts to ripple when it's on thick or tiger stripe. We're going to deal with those issues as well in this video. Now we're here to fix the holes, but we're also, as a little freebie, going to fix this crack as well. Just a little surprise to the customer. First thing we need to do is this crack that runs on the ceiling, uh, address that. So whilst the holes are open, we can reach inside, measure the joist apart, and some extra screws in just to sort of nip that up a little bit. Right, it's really important before you start doing anything to know what type of ceiling you're dealing with. So I know because that crack is a perfectly straight line, if the, if the cracks are running straight and they're at the right angles to each other, you know it's a plasterboard ceiling. If your cracks are running diagonal and they're all funny shapes and they're not straight lines, then you know your ceiling is a lath and plaster ceiling. So it's important you know that because they need dealing with in different ways. We know that this crack is a straight line, so it's... Phone going again. We know it's caused by plasterboard a slight little bit of movement. So what we're going to do is screw the plasterboard back up tight just on the joint of that crack. Now I know it's a better job to re-screw the whole ceiling, but we're not there for that. We're only there to patch the little holes up. That's the only reason we're there. As this little crack is just a little bonus that I'm throwing in for the customer, just to be nice and to show you guys how to sort it out. So what I'm going to do now is solidify that board to the joists to take any movement away when I re-screw it, because originally it was nailed up. Most of them were back then, and screws just tighten the boards tight to the joists. A lot of time when you nail it upside down, the board can be away from the joist, there can be a little gap, and that little bit of vibration will cause a crack. So when you screw them, you're getting them nice and tight to the timbers, you know? Let's get back to it. Nice. So, oh, there's another thing to do as well. The water damage so just make sure it's nice and solid around it. If that went straight through, then we'd need to cut a bigger hole. The water just perishes the board, so make sure that they're not completely just turn into crumbs when you get them. They're big enough, really, but we're going to cut them to the right shape. Right, let's get these boards screwed up tight first, the original boards, before we start doing anything else. Now I'm putting some extra screws into the joists around the area where the holes are because I will be re-skinning over this area. But, as I said before, I'm not going to be going over the whole ceiling doing this because it's not what the customer wanted to pay for. They just wanted the patches doing and I'm just doing this as an extra measure. Sometimes every time you put a screw in and you try to pull a board up, it'll pop straight through. So in that situation, put a screw in. Before it pops right through, stop. Yeah, and then put another screw in. And just before it pops right through, stop. And eventually, as you keep doing that, it will pull the board up, and then you can go back and tighten all the other ones up. It's like a little way of zipping the board up because it one screw is too much pressure on the screw. But when you've got ten screws in, it holds it up, and you can tighten them all up a little bit, each one, little bit, each one, so the board's nice and tight back to the joist again. Right, we've got this one here, so to, to help get rid of this, we're going to find the joists and put a couple of screws each side, the joists run that way, so to find them, we can see a joist here, we'll just feed that in there, right, 15 inches apart, that's a two and a half, so there, there's one joist, 15 inches apart, should put us about there, so there should be a joist there, and every 15 from there on. So let's see, if it's not there, it's really there, there the bounce. No, I missed, so I'm going to go an inch to the side of it. There it is. If you ever miss a joist, just go an inch to the side. If you go more than an inch, you can go past the joist. 
If it's not there, go an inch to the other side and slow you, slowly work your way out methodically. That way you won't miss the joist and you won't go too far one direction without hitting it. This is just to help make sure that balls are nice and tight. There's no movement in them. 15 from there to there. Or thereabouts. We'll get on with fixing them holes in a minute. We know it's going to be somewhere in the vicinity, so if you've missed, go an inch that way, go an inch that way, another inch that way, another inch that way. Work out methodically, don't just go one way because it could be over here and you put 20 screws in trying to find it. So just go dink, 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 dink. Only an inch at a time because you don't want to, you don't want to have seen lads do it and they, they go too far and the joist right in the middle of the screws, so just go an inch that way. <laughs> How's that second screw when I've seen the crack open up, so this will get the boards nice and tight. We'll retake that and skim it. Nice. I seem to be off an inch every time, so we'll go 16 inches instead now. So that puts us here. Hopefully, we should be bang on there now. Don't take for granted that the joists are always going to be perfectly spaced out. This is a suspended sealer, so the joiner that put it in didn't necessarily put it in perfectly. The joists could literally be anywhere. But it won't be far. It'll be here somewhere. Did you see that? Did you see how I pushed the gun sideways as I'm reversing it? That's because the thread of the screw bores the plasterboard out. When you try and back them off, there's nothing to back out. So I push it sideways so the screw bites into the board and it comes out enough for you to be able to put your fingers on and pull it out. See, that's the process now. If I had just kept going that way, I would have missed it. I would have wasted loads of time. Right, you can try all you want. <sighs> It's because the boards are fit inside there, but as you can see, it's not been cut out square. Probably didn't cut it square. Now, you can try and cut one square and then cut a piece of board to fit inside it, but I guarantee you will not have nothing but issues. So the easiest thing is to just measure the biggest size of it. 12, 5, 13, 13 there. Yeah, it's not square at all, so I'm going to cut a board 14 by 14. Fair play, the plumber tried to help us by cutting square holes, but it doesn't matter who you are, you ain't going to cut a square hole freehand. So this is a special little technique to cut a perfect board every time. Now, what you do now is, you take your specialist tool, brand new on the market, and it's just sort of come out recently. Fantastic for jobs like this. Hold your board roughly where you want it to go. There. I wears me a little bit of specialist kit. You see what it is? Builder's pencil, 50p. The amount of plasters I've seen over the years trying to cut boards to fit in holes, and they never fit perfect. Big massive gaps. Just cut the board bigger and mark round it. So much easier, perfect fit every time. Now to make sure your board goes back in the right way, put a little mark on the board so you know it goes that way round. See, I've just marked the side of it. So I don't try and put it back in the hole that way. Or that way, because when you put it down, you might forget. You can do this with a stamina knife, it just takes a lot longer. So, if you can get one of these, invest in one of these, little godsend. Now, just in case you're thinking you don't want to go out and spend a fortune, you can literally buy one of these for about 30 quid. Okay, peanuts. Should we see if it fits? Make sure the little mark lines up, you know, won't fit that way. It's got to go in the right way. You could cut this back to the nearest joist, someone of you, but to be fair, sometimes if the joists are far away, then you can end up with a sliver of board depending on the, what, the size of your hole, and the board can end up flapping because it's so big. So 
take some little scraps of wood, put them in the hole, we'll fix them and then we'll fix the new board to them. What you need to do is fix your timber. See your timber is half over the hole and you're fixing it to the back of the plasterboard. That's all that's holding it in place is the plasterboard. And then the bit that's sticking over the hole, the half that's hanging over, will catch your new piece of plasterboard. So you basically just join the two pieces of the board together with a bit of wood behind. That's it, board fits perfect every single time this way. Timbers are just fixed to the plasterboards. Make sure you put your board in the right way with the mark, line up for the mark. Teeth like came. <laughs> now on this one, I'm going to show you a different way of putting the timbers in. Um, that's why it's a good job. There's two actually, because I can just show you two different ways of doing it, and you can pick whichever way works best for you in whatever situation you find yourself in. Ideally, you can get a set of pliers and, and pull them out, or a claw hand and pull them out. But what happens is you have to use the seam to pry it off of a claw hand, so you end up damaging this more. So you don't want to be doing that if you can help it. You know, you can put there's loads of different ways of doing it. But if you've got a bi metal blade in your vibrator, then you can just cut them off. <laughs> it's not longer than it's worth. <laughs> we'll speed that up. <laughs> Perfect, every single time. Oh, come on. Don't tell me you're not impressed of how snug that fits. Now people always say to me, why don't you use a clayton screw gun, they're so much faster. But look, imagine I had a clayton screw gun, I'd still have to go to the truck and go and get myself my little impact driver for doing this. Don't forget your clayton screw gun, usually doesn't have a reverse, you've got to take the mechanism off the end of it and all that. Trust me, for domestic jobs it's just easier to have an impact driver or a normal screw gun rather than a clayton gun. Yes, scrim sticks to SBR, so that's a bonus. Remember not to overlap your scrims as well. Now, look at this as well. I'm not going to scrim up the patches just yet. Because, come up here, Kim. Come up here. See this? See how the board is set higher? Can you see that on the thing? Yes. See how that's set up there? Sometimes when you scrim things like this, you put your scrim on, like 
that side and it sticks down and comes with your finish you know and you try and stick it and it keeps coming through it's not the best example but i'm going to show you a different way of doing that so when your board is set in a little bit and you need to fill it out don't put your scrims on just yet when a surface is two different levels scrims always kick up and it does your head in do you know what else does me head in when a lad's always on his phone he's meant to be working <laughs> come on <laughs> <laughs> always ready to beat me up come on mix up let's go that's the accelerator going in we're using one full sachet to quarter of a bucket of finish there's lots of ways of speeding up the set of plaster you can use cement dirty water all different weird and wonderful things but this just works perfect every time because it's measured out and we were saying about not putting the scrims on here because when there's a bit of a step sometimes if a seal has been skimmed or re-skimmed a couple of times or for any reason, you know, there's been an article that's been skimmed over, then you'll have to patch a hole up. You'll end up with a different thickness. Um, you can get thicker boards, but obviously, in some places, you know, the board's flush, so we couldn't really go and buy a 15 mil board. Anyway, this is the point. If the board and the ceiling don't match up, don't lay your scrims in now, because your scrims will kick up. Instead, first, build it out. push them into the finish because then you have the same situation again just sit them on top of it just touch the finish and they'll, they'll stick to it Now, does that make sense what I've done? Whenever you try and put scrims on something that's two different levels, the edge of the scrim will keep lifting up and sticking out your plaster. So I've filled the hole out flush with the ceiling, and then my scrims will lay on it flat without kicking up. That happens sometimes. Pretend you didn't see this bit. But these scrims moved a little bit. There you go. That's another reason you shouldn't let your scrims overlap, because see how that moved? If we'd actually caught that the trousers and pulled it off and they were all overlapping, a lot come down in one go. Usually all land on your head as well, so. Right. Now, we'll let that pick up a minute. Whilst that's picking up, fill out the rest of the screens. So now, the aim of the game is to just get a nice little coat of plaster over all the scrims. You don't want any scrims sort of showing through when you're getting the first coat over them. Notice I'm being careful not to leave any big ridges, any big lumps of plaster or any big thick lines. I'm trying to put it on fairly neat, but the stuff is going to set rapid so I haven't got time to mess around for hours either. Now you can't see this and it's hard to explain, but if you can imagine, I know where the scrim is. I'm, I'm not putting pressure there, I'm putting pressure on the trowel sort of where the blend is. I'm literally directing pressure on the trowel to certain points on the ceiling. I'm just giving it all a nice flatten in after the first coat. I'm just getting it nice and flat now because when I leave this pick up for a little bit, I don't want to second coat it when it's wet because it's very easy to take the, take the finish back down to the scrims and have all the scrims showing through and you don't want that. It looks a mess. After this, we'll just leave it for a little while and let it pick up a little bit. Now, I did mention at the start of the video, we were going to be looking at bubbles and tearing and ripples in the plaster and that's all coming very soon. That's it, not a lot, just a little splash, just to wet it up a little bit. What happens now when we wet the chip? Dries a lot quicker. It sets a lot quicker. Same thing. No, it's not. Drying the setting is different. The set is a chemical reaction. 
which we're speeding up by adding accelerator and by knocking the wet stuff back up again. The drying time is when it's ready to paint, which can take anywhere from a day to two weeks, depending on the con weather conditions, temperature, suction, yeah. different things like that. Roger. See that as well? When I put it on the handboard, I do that. I don't smash that and do that. Every time you do that, you're going to chip bits of plaster off your handboard and then they're going to go in your mix. So don't smash your bucket trowel into your handboard. That's a good one to point out if you've got a lad loading you up because other people are notorious for smashing tools into my handboard when they're trying to put stuff on my board for me. It will tear a little bit if you use the accelerator where it's blending in because it will be drying out quite quick on that joint. I'm not so much worried about the, the middle part, I'm more just focusing on the blend at this moment in time. See the tail? See it there? It will happen. Just keep wetting it. And it'll go. But you have to deal with that a little bit each try, and the way to deal with it is to wet it. Okay, don't panic about it, it's not, it's not an issue, you know it's going to happen, so you've just got to wet it down. It's just because the material's on thin, the glass is on thin, and it's drying out, you know. So that's what happens, it doesn't want to blend in as it's thick enough. So that's why you're wetting it, to make it. If I just hit this without wetting it, watch now. See, it tears, that's without water. Brush it, brush it, wet it in. comes in there. Not so much worried about the middles and just going over them anyway because I'm here. But the main focus of this now is getting that blending nice. If you don't catch this early enough then that tearing really becomes a massive issue. So you want to be straight on it straight after you give it a second coat you flatten in you might not be ready for flattening, but the blend will need a dressing straight away. Guys, do you like all these little tips and tricks I keep giving you? Look, I've been plastering full time. I left school at 15. I've been doing this for over 21 years. So in my head, I've got all this information, all this knowledge built up over time, all these little tips and tricks. And I'm trying to squeeze them all into little 20 minute videos to give you the very best quality and the best information that I possibly can. So if you're a DIYer and I'm making your life a hell of a lot easier, or you're a plasterer starting out, or maybe you're experienced and you're picking things up from me that you can use to earn more money, get jobs done faster, get more jobs done, whatever it is. Look, I'm just trying to help you as much as I possibly can. If you appreciate it and you want to buy me a nice little cold beer, there's a link in the description there. You just click on that and you can just send me a beer straight over. There's no obligation. I'm just saying it's there for you if you want to. Hey, cheers, guys. Let's get on with the show. And that's it flattened in with the blender dressed. Now, every single time you trowel it, you've got to concentrate on that blend again, up until about the polish, and then it will stop tearing. Right, on the first wet trowel now, now your tearing will start calming down. Each time you go over it, it won't be as severe. But what I want you to know is don't, don't panic. If it tears a little bit, don't think you've done something wrong. That's what it will do when you blend it in. Now again, I've said it in other videos, <clears throat> but I'll just, in case you haven't seen them, 
flexi trowels seem like they're getting a little beautiful blend, but they're not following the shapes. So where this is tearing is where it's on too thick and the trowel's actually taking it down to blend it into nothing. A flexi trowel will seem like it's in a perfect blend, but it's actually just following the trowel bit because the trowel's flexible. So don't use flexi trowels. It'll look lovely until they paint it and then it's game over. It'll look an absolute mess. Second wet trial now. Did we mention bubbles and ripples? <laughs> They're coming up in just a minute. I shouldn't really be getting too many tears now. Where you blend it in, but you may get one or two. Look at this, come here, come here, just come up here, just stand over there. Can you see them bubbles there? Can you see them bubbles in it or not? Yeah. There's a few little bubbles there. I mean, don't worry, don't panic about it, it's fine. Everyone worries about the bubbles and that, they, they will go. As soon as that plaster starts changing colour and you hard trial it, they'll go. I mean, they happen for all sorts of different reasons. You go over different backgrounds, you know, there's all sorts of different variables. They don't matter as long as they're gone when you polish, you know. And even if you need to go over them again to get rid of them, they won't, they won't stay there forever. They will eventually go as the stuff starts setting and you hit it at the trial, they will go. In this patch here where it's on thick, I'm trying to give you a few things in this video now. A few, you, know, you can apply this to different situations. See where it's on thick, it starts to ripple a little bit because it's on, like, you know, it's a, it's a little thickness. So this technically does the same as what it, it would if you hit it with a sponge float. Just brush it where it's all rippling. Brush it that way and that way. You know, just hit it a few different ways. I'll just give that a minute or two and we'll come back to that in a second. The bit where you brushed, give that another little wet. And all your ripples you basically brought the fat up and they all get filled in. Now plaster ripples when it's on thick and it's on wet. So when you've brushed it, you've opened the plaster up and you've left it for a while. You let the air get to it. That dries it out, stops it being so wet. And it also brings the fat up. So it sort of does two things at once. Nearly there now. See, once you've let the plaster dry out a little bit, once you've let the air get to it, it'll firm up and stop rippling. But then you've still got all the old ripples that are still there. And you, the fact you've brought the fat up means that you can start filling all the deviations with the fat and getting it nice and flat. If the ripples came back when you went over it, it's because it's still too wet. You haven't given it long enough to dry out or the plaster hasn't had enough time to set. Notice I'm doing this on the second wet trowel, not the first wet trowel. Look at that. Do you think that's a bit of a bald spot on the back of my head there? People always sort of say to me, you know, do you get, do you get any sticking on YouTube sort of putting yourself out there? I say to them, the person that trolls me the most is my missus. I had to flip him block her from my channel because she was saying, you've got a bald spot on your head. I don't like your beard. Oh, you're getting too fat. Your voice irritates me. <laughs> flipping heck. Just clean the, uh, never the corner, you saw. So. 
Starting to change colour now, so now it's well ready for the polish. Now, at this stage, you shouldn't get any tearing whatsoever. Tearing should be well under control now, and this is where, if you've got any little bubbles like we had in that section, they'll just be gone as you hit it with this trowel. Once I've done this all over, I'm going to go around with the cloth and wipe around any mess that's around the edges. But don't start wiping your blend with the cloth. If you start wiping away at this here, then you can potentially wipe out some of your stuff that you've used to fill out and you'll have a little step. So don't wipe the blend, just wipe, you know, around the edges. Just it's, you don't have to. It just make the job look a bit tidy, that's all, you know. and flat. The little thing we did the ripples, that's worked. We brought the fat up, we're brushing it, and then we trialled it, got a good of hard trial, but after brushing it, we let it stay for five minutes. If you do it straight away, you'll end up causing loads of bubbles in it. I don't know why that does that, but it just does. So brush it, leave it for a little bit, let the air get to it whilst it's open, sort of sets it off a little bit, and you brought the fat up, wet it a bit, trial it, and it brings the fat up and fills all the cases in. We'll go more into this in other videos because there's a bit more to it and I don't want to try and bombard you with too much stuff in, in one little clip. One little bit I wasn't happy with. Zoom in here, see this? It's wiped a little bit off and I haven't noticed it before. So I've just poured a little bit of stuff off the side of my bucket because that's where to keep it. Sorted. So remember now when you're cleaning down, remember not to rub into the blend. If you rub that out, you're gonna cause a little ridge where you've blended in because it is like literally fat of plaster and you'll just wipe it out and, and, and your, your whole blend will stand out when it's painted. Now, notice before I said to you, I, I sort of fixed that crack for free. That was a little surprise for the customer. But there's a little lesson to be learned in this, right? sort of doing things that people haven't asked shit about. So sort of make sure you know what you're doing. So I'll tell you a mad story. My mate, I've got, I've got a load of mates that are plasterers, and my mate, a flipping top lad, he was trying to get in with this builder, and he'd done a couple of jobs for him, and he thought, you know what, the best way to sort of get in with it, if you do a little bit of an extra thing for someone, they really like you, you know, they appreciate that you've gone out the way for them a little bit. So he thought to himself, you know, this builder... <clears throat> Upstairs in this house where we make the plastering, it's all tiled, all the floors are tiled in the bathrooms, the en suites and everything. So a lot of the work that the, the plumbers and the sparks have had to do, they've had to do from underneath the ceiling. So they've cut holes in the ceiling and the builders have them really take the time, cut the squares out neatly with a multi-tool and keep each piece and number it so it can all go back in the same hole. So my mate's in there on the weekend and he's, he's doing a little bit of patching up and what have you. And he thought, do you know what? I'm going to look after this fella because I want to stay in with him. I'm going to do a nice little thing here. 
he took his time. He put all the little squares back in, free of charge. Didn't want nothing for it. Just he just thought I'll do it because I'm here. Put all the squares back in, and then Fimp spent all day patched it all up. The job looked perfect, and he thought I won't even mention it. It'd be a little surprise for the builder. So they all come back on Monday, and uh, to be fair, like the builder. He was surprised because they hadn't done the work yet. They'd just cut the holes out. And he's been in flipping pad stepping up. <laughs> just smash it all back out again. <laughs> flipping. So be careful. Be ca Sometimes you're trying to do a good thing, but you can really, you know, you can cock things up. So just, I don't know, just, just be careful what you do. Right, hope you enjoyed that. If there's any questions, leave them in the comments. If you like the video, Give us a thumbs up. If you bought me a beer, cheers. See you on the next one.